right, well, let's look at an example of pricing out an investment asset with a known income. And we'll look at a 10-month contract. We want to find the uh, forward price or the futures price today of a 10-month contract. We observe in the marketplace an asset that is currently selling for 50 bucks. We observe in the market a risk-free rate of 8% per annum. And associated with this particular asset, which is probably a stock, hence the dividend schedule, we see in three months, six months, and nine months, we have quarterly dividends of 75 cents to pay on this stock within this 10-month time frame. So this is an investment asset with known income. And we know that pricing one of these out, the forward price or the futures price must be equal to the spot price today minus the net present value of the income, not just the income, the net present value of the income. And that will be carried to the end of the term. So what do we need? Again, um, as I've said in earlier examples, we're looking at a crime scene. Let's just think about it that way. We're a detective. This is a crime scene. And we need to solve it by finding the clues. The clues are all here. These are all the clues that we need. So how do we solve this? Well, S0, we're told, is 50. Minus our I. Well, our I is a little bit tricky because that is the net present value of our income. So we will uh, put another bracket here to solve the net present value. Typically, we would like a risk-free rate for three months that's annualized, a risk-free rate for six months that's annualized, and one for nine months that's annualized. We don't have that. We're going to use just the 8%, but keep in mind that this is a simplification to show you how to deal with the income. Typically, we would like to see uh, the proper uh, risk-free rates annualized for each of the three, six, and nine-month period. So let's discount back the first cash flow, 75 cents discounted back at 8% for three months. Plus, we'll discount back the next cash flow at point and negative, sorry, the negative, negative 0 0.08 for six months. And we will discount back the third cash flow at negative 0.08 uh, for nine months. We'll close bracket on that. So here we've dealt with what's in the bracket and now we're going to compound that continuously at the risk-free rate for 10 months of the 12. And now all we have to do is simply solve. If we solve for this we will get 2.162. So we'll, we'll have $50 minus 2.162. Now, I want to be clear what we're doing here. This $2.16.2 represents the net present value of all the dividends we have to pay. That represents all the dividends we have to pay. So if we had $2.16.2 and we invested that at the risk-free rate, we would easily make all of these payments. That's fine. And since we're borrowing money to buy this asset, uh, we want to know how much, after we put this aside to meet all the payments, we will be left with 50 minus that. That amount will grow at E uh, to the uh, 0 0.08 times uh, 5 sixth. 10 over 12 is 5 over 6. We'll get $51.14. So, F not the futures price today for this particular uh, investment asset, if the spot price is 50 bucks, we would pay $51.14 today for it. Uh, and that would leave no arbitrage opportunities. Now, before we move on, I want to say something. This price, this is F0, this price has nothing to do with what the market thinks that this stock will be worth in 10 months. That is not what it's saying. Some students get confused with the futures price saying, oh, so the market thinks that this, that, that this will only be $51.14 in the future. No, that is not what it's saying at all. That is not what it's saying. A futures price, the futures price is a function of the spot price, the risk-free rate and the time to maturity. 
that's it. Nowhere in here do we have a variable for expectation. This is just a time value argument for the futures price given what it costs today, what we can carry it for, and for how long we have to carry it. That's it. It is a no arbitrage price. It is not an expected future price. It is a no arbitrage price. That's it. It could be completely, you could look at that and say, you know what? Uh, the, that asset price is going way up. Well, if it's going way up, then buy it, right? But the futures price has nothing, has nothing to do with expectations at all. We'll get to expectations shortly. All we're doing is setting up the formula by doing what's called, and arriving at what's called a no arbitrage price. That is the fair value. That is the right futures price given what the three variables are. And that's it. All right, let's move on. Okay, so let's do our third case. Uh, we've done no income. We've done known income. Now we're going to do a known yield. This one's actually quite easy to see in your head. So remember that our futures price in the no income scenario was the spot price uh, e to the RT. Well, R is what we're paying as a percentage to carry the asset for term T. If during that term we actually receive an income of Q percent, then our financing costs must be R minus Q, the interest rate we pay minus the percentage that we get back. So it's simply just the difference between the two, R minus Q. So that's nice and easy. So let's do an example to see how it looks because there is a bit of a trick in it. There is a bit. So let's look at a four month, uh, uh, or sorry, six month forward. Um, and the asset will yield 2% per six month period. 2% per six month period, which means that this is a 4% uh, uh, per annum yield uh, with uh, uh, M equal to two. I think you can start to see the problem, right? Our risk-free rate is 10% per annum uh, with continuous compounding. Well, now we have mixed, uh, 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 mixed compounding periods. We have uh, uh, m equals to 2 here and continuous compounding here. So we're going to have to do something to fix that, right? So we're asked to calculate the futures price. We need to calculate the futures price. But to do that, it requires... It requires continuous compounding. So our Q must be expressed with continuous compounding. Right now we have a Q that's expressed with semi-annual compounding. So this is 4% per annum compounded semi-annually. We need to know, well, what would it be if it were compounded continuously? This is why chapter four was such an important thing to do and worth spending time on. Do you remember how to convert uh, a non-continuously compounded rate into a continuously compounded rate? We derived the formula, remember, RC equals M natural log of one plus RM over M. So now all we have to do is just substitute in. We know that m equals 2, so we will get 2 ln 1 plus, what's our rm? Our m is 0 0.04. Don't, don't take the 0 0.02. Remember, everything must be, must, be, must be expressed annually. Average yield per annum. And so it's 4.04 .04 is our rm, and we have 2 is 2 natural log of 1.02 we will get 3.96 percent <clears throat> so now we have our Q expressed uh, annually this is 3.96 percent per annum with continuous compounding F not requires continuous compounding we're given R with continuous compounding now we have Q with continuous compounding it's hard to keep it all straight, isn't it? But that's a little bit tricky when we get to known yield. Make sure that everything is expressed as 
continuously compounded. So now all we have to do really is uh, is solve for the unknowns that uh, that we need. How do we do this again? F naught is S naught e to the r minus q t. So let's just substitute in S naught. We're told is 25 e. Our r is 0 0.10 minus, and our uh, q is 0 0.00 0 0.0 three nine six and our t we're told is 0 0.5 there we go so that will give us 2577 2577 so when the spot price is at 25 and we're looking at a six month forward contract the futures price f naught today will be 2577 so when we enter into this contract that is the price at which we are obligated in six months to trade the underlying asset at $25.77. That is our no ARB price. So let's, uh, let's review before we move forward. What have we done? We have done a no income investment asset. We have done a known income investment asset and we have done a known yield investment asset so we've c come up with the futures price at the time of contract inception we know the price of the futures price well what happens once we enter in to the contract and the uh, spot price starts to change. What if it changes on us? We've already entered into it and it starts changing on us. And we don't want to hold the contract till the end of the period. We want to get rid of it. We want to sell it to someone. Well, now we need to know, well, how do we value this contract so that we can start to trade it? How do we value it so that we can start to trade it so we don't necessarily have to hold it if we don't want to hold it? Uh, especially if we're buying at, at, at fair value. We're not, there, the, remember, it's the no arbitrage price, so there's no, there's no benefit in holding it if we don't want it anymore. Uh, it's not that we have to hold it to realize the arbitrage profit. Uh, we bought it at fair value, and we've changed our mind. Six months later, but the price S0 has moved. How do we determine whether we owe money or whether we should be paid money for transferring this contract or closing it out early? That's next.